Welcome back to That LA Garage. Today we're gonna to work on this 981 Porsche Boxer. We have a problem with the roof. Uh, it doesn't open all the way. It stops at one point and it constantly tells me that uh, there's a malfunction in the roof. So uh, I got some sensors and I'm gonna show you in this uh, video how to fix the problem if you have a similar problem or if you ever need to take the roof off, I'll go through that procedure, how to put it back on as well. Um, but before we start, uh, please hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment at the end of the video. And let's get to work. All right, so this is, see, top is not in full final position, in, in, full, in final position. So when I close it all the way, I'm gonna give you guys the symptoms before we fix it. So it's fully closed. You can see they're locked in, everything is closed. And then if you look, it says top is not it is not in final position. Once again, if I open it all the way up, you can see it's unlocking. And that's where it stops. So this is what I'm going to be solving today. If you have this type of problem, this is, should be your solution, hopefully. All right, so this is how you op put the roof in service mode. Put in the key. Leave the roof to around this area, one, one palm. Uh, there's this latch, you gotta reach from underneath over here and just slide it under. I did that before. And now you gotta reach in through here also. There's two straps that hold down the, hook, the trunk. Oh, one other thing, you gotta open up the trunk. This this will give you this much more space. See that? Now, we gotta pull this up a little bit just so I can get in there. And there's two little hooks, two little cables that I, I have to, I have to get to. So let's see if we can get to it from here. Oh, it's really tight in here. But there's one cable. We gotta just unhook it. Oh, one. And next one's on this side. Unhooked. Alright, so now. We're gonna lift this baby up. All right, so after you remove this, uh, after you get this open to this, about this much, about, uh, I think, 100 millimeters, you pull this through just to get it started, and then you have to open the roof up till it gets to this point. So you open the roof, till around there, and then, you can pull on on the rest of it to come all the way through. These are the these are the straps that hold it in place. They go right here. It was hard to show you guys before while I was uh, while I was grabbing from from the inside, but now that it's out, you can see it. It is just for kicks. Let's take this out.
All right, so I got these repair kits. They're supposed to fix this. And they have rivets. So that means I gotta rivet them in. That's one. And this one is the second one. Now, I'm not sure exactly where they go, but let's put the roof in a service mode. I finally got to the root of it, the bottom of it, and now I can talk. Uh, now I know, now I can talk about it. So, if you're gonna do this at home, don't. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. But if you do want to, and you feel like uh, you feel I feel like you got balls of steel. Let's let let me run through it. First, you got to take off the padding from here. You got to take the padding from behind. There's that piece over here. This sits on top. Oi. This guy sits on top the roll bar. Remove these two bolts. They're 16 millimeter. Take those out, and that will slide up. After that. You, uh, they slide out of here on both ends. After that, there's two bolts over here, and there's uh, the seat belt that sits here. You'll see when I put it back together how it goes. Uh, there's a little piece that goes over here, like that. There's a little Torx bolt that goes over there. Remove that to get to that bolt. You take that bolt, that bolt. These are the opposite of Torx. I forgot, I don't know what those are called. They're these guys. They go right here. Two of those, and then two long bolts that go across from this bracket. There's two brackets here. These are the two. This is the two brackets on each side. These are the brackets that, and, and motors that hold push up and down. Um. So wait, let me put this back so I don't lose it. After you done taking those things apart. Uh, you disconnect the motor from here and there. There's a connector right here and same thing over there. Uh, you disconnect those connectors. Then there will be a tiny small bracket that sits on top, which looks like this. That goes on the top here. That, that will hold in uh, this from coming in and out. All right, let me just put, the, there's a certain order I put them in. I don't want to lose them. There's that, then I will, then you're able to pull it out. Oh wait, before that, there's this. This bracket goes right here. And you see these little hooks, you got to lift them up and remove them. You're going to have to lift them up and remove them before this will be, will be able to come out. Because this kind of pushes it back into place. You have one on each side. All right, let me put this down. Oh, over here, this is that flap that covers uh, all the motor once the roof is out, right? It has this guy. This is the way it sits in it. It's uh, just like a like a bike brake lever. It goes into there and it'll, it'll, you know, pull it down, right? But afterwards it gets locked into here. Oh, that broke, that's great. But anyways. It goes into there, so you I, you pull it out. Once you get to pull it out, you can remove this, and then this whole assembly will be able to come out. So now to the two sensors that we need to remove. Uh, because they have rivets in them, we're gonna have to drill them out. So I'm gonna get my little drill ready. So I got one right here ready. You got three rivets that's one two this one all right let's not ruin that rubber
I'm going to get a pick to push it out. Now you have here, right here is the connector. Disconnect the connector. There we go. Push this out. <clears throat> because the new sensor has that already in it. Use a screwdriver instead. There we go. Slide it in. Good. Now, if this breaks, it doesn't really matter because we got a whole new one to come in to replace it with. So one, two. And the third one's already out. The sensor. Is the switch. Hmm. Seems kind of weak, but I don't know. Maybe it works, maybe not. Who knows? We're putting in new ones anyways. Take out the rivets on the other end. Okay. I'm gonna match it up now with the, the new one because I don't know which one's right or left. There we go. Yeah, these are more of a solid click to them. All right, hopefully that's that. Now we're gonna need three rivets that are supplied with it. I'm gonna get my rivet gun. And we're gonna... Good. That's in there. On to the other side. So I'm gonna grab the sensor. That's the problem we having. It wasn't even the sensor, it was this. It is this connector. Ooh. Okay. You see that guys? This got corroded and broke out. And that's the reason for this failure. Hey guys, okay, so now we're back at fixing the roof of this boxer. I figured out the problem. Let me show you what I had to go through to get to this. It was a whole big mess. I've been on this thing for about a day and a half. Uh, it was very frustrating, but once I found the problem, great relief. And uh, hopefully this can help one of you guys if uh, if you ever have this problem and you need to fix it so let's go on to these are all the parts that needed to come out to get to figure it out 
Um, uh, this is how the car has to look like. You have two sensors, one uh, over here, one over there. I'm going to show it to you on the, on the bench of uh, the ones that I changed. And um, So there's two sensors. One on the driver, one one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. They're called micro switches. And when I changed them, they weren't the issue, but they were. So what I mean by that was when I was doing it, you could see that there's corrosion in this uh, one connector. So when I did this, the wires from the harness just fell out. So this connector was already compromised, so I didn't even use it. I soldered in the new sensor in instead. Uh, this way I won't have any problems. There's no chance of it giving me any issues. Uh, but after I finished installing them, the, it didn't solve the problem, which was really frustrating. Uh, let me go around and I'll show you. I'll show you a little bit of the madness. So over here, see I had to use the voltmeter. There, this is the body module. And in this connector, this blue one, is where most of the connectors are. Let me put this thing back now that I don't need to. This is under the driver's, driver's seat. That controls uh, the roof. Um, so what I did was from the wires over here, from that, from the two switches I showed you earlier, I uh, checked continuity back and forth. Everything was good. There's a sensor in here also. I uh, checked that continuity. Everything was fine. And it, I, I was baffled. I, was, I kept on doing different things, trying different methods and this and that. So it turned out being, this is the, the latch for the, for the roof. It sits in here. Uh, these, these have nuts on the inside. They're very tough to get in. So, I don't know, that's a whole pro project that I'm going to have putting it back together. But this one sensor, you have two sensors here that deal with the latch that turn on and, off, on and off with the movement of this arm. This one sensor, see how it's soldered on, was lifted up. So the sensor wasn't even riding against the arm. And just because of that, uh, that was that was the reason the the roof stopped in this position. So so that was the reason why it stopped in this position. So I have to remount it. I did remount it and tested it, so it works. But um, I took it out for you guys, so you guys can take a look at it. Hopefully, again, it, it helps somebody out there. Um, but you see these, these, these little toggle, these little micro switches. This is the one that was just pointed up. If everybody, anybody has the same issue as me, you know what, what it could be. And one other thing, let me just, sh let me just show you the schematics. If you ever need it, it's hard to find um so anything for these things so if i could this is the computer that we saw that was under the chair this is the one that the ho the hood latch up up top this is the one that is right over the windshield and this is the one on the driver's side passenger side on the motors of the of the roof so this is the area where I was con concentrating uh, because uh, let's say over here you had the relay motor or the, for the motor and the latch. That worked and also the motors themselves worked. They went up and down. They just stopped at a certain point. So I knew it was a sensor issue. Uh, something wasn't allowing it 
to go the full route for some reason. So now knowing it, knowing what it is, it's because this one was tripped out. It didn't, it never, one of them, because there's two here, one of them never let, never told the computer that the latch is fully in. So that these, that one of them, one of them tells the computer, okay, the latch is fully out and connected. And the other one is, oh, it's, it's fully retracted. So that's, that's, that's the two sensors. So it, it never told it that it's retracted. So it stopped itself in this position with it because it thought that the latch was still hanging out and it didn't want it to destroy anything that was sitting in here. It, at this point, the latch would be all the way retracted. So um, that's what I feel is this, was the issue or what the computer was thinking, but the problem is solved. So now I'm gonna take a break, go eat some food and start reassembling this whole thing. So I'll see you on the flip. So now that it's in place, um, I took these two bolts back out uh, just so I can move this around. There's a back bracket over there. Uh, this bolt has to go in the back and plus there's a pin over there. Let me try to show it to you. That has to go onto this bracket. I'm going to move it and here. You see this pin right here. Right there. Once that pin is in its location, I can take my my bolt and start threading it in. out over here Let's see I want to start with this piece this of course goes over here but before we're gonna put it we're gonna put this inside inside the flap all right dress it in there and then lock this into place that's it and slide it back. Slide it back. There's a hole in there that you're gonna start this one. That's good. There's another one, same size that goes in the back of it. There it is. We're just gonna start threading it.
adhere to the main bolts. Tighten by hand. That should be good. Next part is the seat belt. Seat belt, leave the plastic, all that stuff right here. Leave it down here. Now I'm gonna put this shaft all the way in, lock it in, and then you could put that bolt in. Now I'm going to dress the back up with the interior. Um, there's a foam that goes here. I'll put in the foam. Um, I'll tuck everything in just because the roof still is not in. I can I could pull it. It's still in service mode. So I could do whatever I need back there. Um, and then I will start tucking it back in and we'll work on this area and the carpet. Feel it, I can't see it, but I feel it. Now this guy's nice and tight. We're gonna go on to do the next one. That's it. Now we can test the roof, see if it's working, and then we can work on this area. So the roof finally works. Uh, goes up, goes down as, as, as supposed to. Um, we touched on a lot of different parts of this roof. So even if you don't have this type of problem per se, you know where the sensors are, all the sensors, you know where the computer is. You basically have all the tools to fix the roof in your, uh, in your uh, 980, 981 boxer. Um, uh, if you like the content of this video, if it helps you out, please share, subscribe, like, comment, all that good things. Uh, it's still a new YouTube channel, so we need as uh, much support as possible. Um, if you want some LA Garage swag, I only have a few t-shirts left, so uh, contact me through uh, Instagram, that LA Garage. And... 
Last but not least, if you ain't got haters, you ain't poppin'. <laughs>